Chad Welcome. Rutgers is losing. Chad Rutgers is about to be eliminated. They're not going to survive. Welcome to the quickest bug buzzer in Hoops HD history. Uh, this is our Bracket Racket show. I'm your host, Chad Sherwood, joined by a full panel tonight. <laughs> David Chad Griggs. just flopped. We haven't happened? done the Bracket Racket in years. Bracket Rundown, I said, didn't I? Did I say Bracket Racket? You said Bracket Racket. Must be a force of habit. We just did that about five years ago. Let's just start over again, okay? <laughs> Welcome, everybody. This is Hoops HD, the Bracket Rundown show. <laughs> Host Chad. Welcome Enjoy to Under the Radar. Uh, we got David Griggs. We got Matt Zukowski, John Sleeka, Joby Fortson, John Titel. Everybody's everywhere. I don't know. Um, I can't run down show. Uh, David, tell us what the show is about because I'm losing it here. Um, any, well, essentially, we have all submitted a seed list, which is a ranking of the top, in our case, 50 teams. Uh, we sent those to you. You cross-country ranked them. You came up with a master ranking, and then you, which is a master seed list, and then you bracketed those teams, and none of us really know except you what the final results were. So selection Sunday style, we're going to reveal the bracket line by line and discuss it and debate it as we go. Exactly. Um, and I guess I, let's just go get right into it, I guess. Uh, nothing else we got to do tonight, is there? No, no games going on. Yeah, welcome uh, to the Hoops HD report. Hoops HD report. Who knows what we're doing? Um, okay. There it is. It should be, come, should be on the screen right now. There is a blank bracket. And what we're going to do is reveal the top 16 teams one at a time. Uh, have a little discussion about each of them as we reveal them and whether they belong there or not. And we are recording this around nine, a little after nine forty on March Thursday, March first. These lists were submitted. Most of them were submitted as of the close of play yesterday. So most of today's results have not been factored in. Most notably, Joby, the number one team in our bracket, is having a little bit of trouble right now as we record. <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, some quick terminology for those, because it is March. I noticed on the site today we had a lot more traffic than what we typically have. People might be seeing it for the first time or, you, you know, that haven't been year. Uh, can you just define a couple things, Chad, or anybody? What is a protected seed? What is a first ballot team? And what is a bubble team? Because right. we're going to be using those terms throughout the show. Real quick, protected seeds are these top 16 teams, are the ones that are in yellow on the screen there, in fact. Uh, the term protected means that they're not allowed to be at a home court disadvantage in the first round, but really that very rarely comes up. Anyhow, more of we use it just as a general term to incorporate the top 16 teams. A first ballot team is generally a team that's among the top 32 to 36 teams that get in. Basically, everybody through the eight line, those are teams that tend to get in without much debate in the committee room. And uh, bubble teams are, are the teams that, that are down there at the very end of the bracket. Um, you'll see the top teams out down there, which we'll reveal after we get through all the at-large teams that we're going to be selecting tonight. And those are the teams that could slip up and steal one of these bids. Does that cover it? I think it does. All right. And, Joby, let me turn back to you. You are a Virginia guy, and we do have Virginia ranked unanimously yeah. number one in, in, our, in our bracket here. Well, would they, you know, right now they're down 10 uh, with only six minutes to go um, at Louisville. So, in all honesty, it's more of a question for the panel. Does whoever are, do, you know, I think the number ones, in my opinion, are pretty clear. Do you see any of the potential number, other number ones, passing Virginia with this loss at the Yum Center? Because that is a very relevant question. Uh, um. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are, oh, and if you, so, who would you have, uh, you know, with it playing out in that particular way? I think that's a real question. I'm biased. I think Virginia would still hold the number one overall spot, even with a lost night in Louisville. But I'd like to hear from the panel. On, well, on I'm not biased, Louisville and I'm not I agree. Uh, my reasoning is because uh, Virginia is still in first place. Losing this game, it's the overall body of work. It doesn't take any of the good off of their profile. It's just as good as it was before. Uh, they're still set up to go for the double, and I just don't see – I know that the, the way the rankings work, the top 25, it, it all weighs heavily on what you did in the last week. But for the selection committee and what we do, it's what you've done all season. This erases nothing – they're still number one overall, even if they lose. Uh, it would make me raise Louisville up more than what I had them, but Virginia, they're number one right now regardless. 
Well, Tut Tut, let me ask you the same question. I put Virginia's profile on the screen. We've got Villanova next to them. You see, Villanova has four losses. You had one more quadrant one or tier one loss on Virginia. Do you, th you still have Virginia better than Nova? Uh, coin flip. I don't think it's uh, – it's. I don't think it's obvious or clear or anything. I mean, they both have good non-conference strength of schedule. They both have good other metrics. Solid on the road, undefeated neutral. Like, not mirror images because Virginia is like 10 points away from being undefeated and Villanova's got several losses, including the Tier 3 one. But um, if Virginia loses and Villanova keeps winning, I think you could make the argument that they should leapfrog. All right. Well, maybe I gave it away by bringing up Villanova, but um, you did. <laughs> uh, yeah. Matt, number two overall was Villanova. Are you shocked? <laughs> uh, plus, I know Joby did. I actually had them as my last number one seed, and that I would have had their conference made Xavier just a shade ahead of them. But actually, when I had Kansas, I've grown on Kansas. Something they've always had the profile, and now I like their recent play on the courts matching their profile. So I'm a little bit surprised they're ahead of the other two teams who are outright first in their leagues. Well, Salika, you are a Xavier guy. What do you think about the fact that Xavier is up a game on Nova in the Big East standings and yet behind them on this uh, seed list here? I honestly don't think that matters too much. I mean, if we're looking at the overall body of work, let's not forget Villanova also has wins against other protected seeds like Tennessee and Gonzaga away from home. What Xavier has done is they're, they've already won at least a share of the Big East Conference title. But by the same token, a lot of the teams they're beating are probably going to be in the 7 to 10 range. They're not protected seed quality teams. Their highest caliber win is going to be Cincinnati. And I could argue they're, they're not a protected seed at this point, but We'll figure that out later on. Well, number three overall, actually, it was not Xavier. It was Matt, your team. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, I, I will tell you that this actually was a almost virtually a dead heat, actually. They were actually tied. Uh, I had to use a tiebreaker where I threw out the highest and the lowest, and that's how Kansas uh, ended up taking that spot. But, but, Matt, what is your thought about Kansas actually leapfrogging Xavier this week? Yeah, I think at this point it's fair. Like, like I said, I would have – personally, I would have had Kansas, then Xavier, then Nova in that. So, like, But I don't have an issue with Kansas being ahead of Xavier. I think a little bit better overall profile. They're both like really similar as teams where their highs are good. They generally find a way to pull out games, but have played some closer games and maybe even lost one or two they shouldn't have. Well, yeah, and I tell you, look at them. I think Kansas, the metrics are better. The tier one quantity is better. That there's, other than than you know that Oklahoma State loss, I I I think I agree with that. That Kansas might be better than Xavier right now. I just laugh at everybody who's like, "Oh, this is the year Kansas is not going to win the Big Twelve <laughs> again," and they won it again. Like, give them a one seed, put them in. I don't think they're going to win it all, but like, there's enough quadrant one wins there for like two number one seeds. <laughs> Well, do we need to move them down a line or two? Because, I mean, you've got to keep in mind, Missouri might be on the 10 or 11, which would mean the, uh, Kansas should move down. <laughs> Eight or nine, Dave. Eight or nine. <laughs> I don't think it's any surprise that Xavier is on the one line. Uh, they're now heading out west. That's another big difference by, by Kansas surpassing Xavier. It gives uh, Kansas the Omaha region, Xavier heading out west to Los Angeles. Yeah, congrats. <laughs> Maybe right. Xavier should tank it to move down a line. You get to play Gonzaga <laughs> in the Sweet 16, I predict. That'll be fun. Uh, we'll get to that in a bit, Joe, because, because we've got a little discussion there, too. But uh, on the two lines, starting things off is now Duke, uh, number five overall. Yeah. And, uh, and Joby, you're the ACC guy. Do you think Duke can sneak onto the one line at this point? Uh, the only way – I no, the loss at Virginia Tech is not a damning loss by any stretch – but to make the leap forward above those top four teams, you need to win that game. And, you know, we're talking about the number one seed, not whether you're a bad team or a good team at this stage. Duke can. Certainly they'd have to win the ACC tournament. They have to beat Carolina. They get Carolina. Uh, you know, so that's another uh, good regular season win before the ACC tournament starts. And then the Big East loser, you know, would have to maybe even flame out early, but even – 
they'd have a shot. Not saying they would. I didn't have them, I don't think, as number five overall. But I would uh, also I would also add that if Xavier wins the Big East right now, at a minimum. If Xavier wins the Big East outright and finally overcomes their Villanova demon, I just don't see them falling off the one line at that stage, no matter what Duke or Carolina does. Well, well I'm not oh, asking. I agree. I'm that saying they wouldn't. It, it would be a situation where Xavier doesn't do that, doesn't play it out. You know, yeah, if they beat Villanova, yeah, I think there's a chance for two Big East teams on the number one line at that point. Yeah, but if Xavier flames out in the semifinals of the Big East tournament, Duke right. wins the ACC tournament, that type of situation. Right. Right. Let's assume, he, yeah, because Duke will have presumably beaten somebody good along the way. Yeah, probably, be, probably beating both Virginia and our number six overall team, David, North Carolina. Yeah, Third two ACC. playing. Yeah, I guess. Well, my thing is, I still like North Carolina more than Duke, but that's going to sort itself out. They play each other this weekend, uh, eight miles apart. Never met in the NCAA tournament playing this weekend. Um, but uh, and I guess the winner of that would. Certainly, especially if it's North Carolina beating Duke for a second time, you would think you would almost have to put them ahead of Duke. Uh, North Carolina losing at home the other night in a rather crazy uh, fashion, but a really exciting game. I guess we'll get to that a little later because I'm sure Miami made the field after that. But overall, I I like the way both these teams are playing. I like both of them, and it'll work itself out because we still got the game against each other and then the tournament after that. Well, let's go beyond the third ACC team that already made the field here and uh, hit with our, our first Big Ten team. And, uh, and this was actually unanimous this week that Michigan State belonged on the two line, which is the first time they've ever reached there on our fields. So, Titel, are you there with this Michigan State team? Are, you just uh, said it was unanimous. Well, well I, mean, I mean, what are your thoughts on, on you know, people that have said, hey, they don't even belong this high up? They're 28 and three, and they've won 12 in a row. Uh, put them up there. What's funny is that I kind of assume that if Michigan State keeps running the table and wins the Big Ten tournament, they could end up 31 and three and be a one seed. But when you think about it, there's a decent chance that those last three wins are going to be Wisconsin, Nebraska, and Penn State, which might actually hurt their RPI. <laughs> <laughs> and game update: Virginia's cut it to two, two and a half minutes to go. Yeah, but uh, that is that's uh, yeah, and, and they really, I mean, they still they have they're lacking wins against teams that are going to be in this field: Carolina, neutral court, Purdue at home, and uh, that's it, David. Yeah, I know, right? And, and, and you really not a one seed if you have only being two teams that are even in the field, are you? I don't think so. Uh, I, the committee didn't think so the other day, so no, I I, I really don't think so. Yeah, okay. I would even if they got the perfect path of Michigan and then Purdue and they win both. I don't even know if what that would put them. In. I think they'd maybe be number five or number six, but I don't think they can climb to the one line. I agree with that, Matt, a hundred percent. But I do think that the chance to be the top two, so to speak, is very realistic. I, I think they can pass Carolina and Duke. You know, it, it, barring they don't, those teams don't win the ACC tournament. The winner of the ACC tournament will get. Yeah top line on that and they'll, they'll if they win they'll obviously be ahead of purdue and others that we'll discuss well, i know that purdue uh has the loss at wisconsin uh that they finished a the game behind michigan state in the standings lost to um lost to michigan state but that's this a two profile the right there and david i like it better than michigan states right now i think and the metrics are better than michigan states they're they are number eight overall on our on our bracket so they are our last well yeah the team's better the metrics are better the uh you, you know the paper's better uh you, you know and if they beat them in the conference tournament then then maybe you should consider putting them ahead maybe i think you would i mean we have them seven and eight right now i think purdue beats michigan state head to head they 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 jump over them Oh yeah, I I would it, you they would have yeah, to. I think it'd be, first of all, the, if Michigan State does not win the Big Ten tournament, I think they may just end up on that to be light after all. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and start, start taking a look at some of the three seeds. And the top three seed title is the Auburn Tigers out of the SEC, a team that that's you know kind of come a little bit back down to earth recently, though, aren't they? They are. Um, they certainly uh, are not trending in the right direction, but uh, a good thing about the SEC having a strong uh, this year 
is that unlike Michigan State, I think that Auburn and Coach Pearl are going to have big chances to get big wins in Tier 1 in the SEC tournament next week. I agree with that. And uh, and also, let me, uh, Joby, let me show you the second uh, three seed. This is number 10 overall. Uh, the second team out of the SEC, Tennessee. Uh, are we at a point where Tennessee is ready to, to jump over? I overall? had a lot of trouble between these two teams, to be very blunt. I, I This is exactly where I had them. I think I did go with Auburn, but if you could argue Tennessee, the only reason I went with Auburn is they've split the regular season, as I remember, and Auburn's ahead in the, in the conference. Uh, and so uh, that, you know, that sort of combination – made me think, okay, I'm going to go with Auburn here. And, uh, you know, that, 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 but it, 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 we'll see in the conference tournament. It will play itself out. And we're talking nine versus ten on the seed line. That's not a big deal. Yeah, I mean, what well, we are talking here, they are actually both tied at 12 and five now in conference with Auburn with back-to-back losses. Tennessee's won three straight. Uh, but, again, you, you're right. Auburn does have the head-to-head victory over in the, among the, between the two yeah. teams. I was. I think if one of these two teams wins the SEC tournament, they're going to actually end up as on the two line. I think that's fair. And in the case of Tennessee, it would also mean getting to play in Nashville as opposed to having to travel west to Wichita. Yeah, you see there that the second Nashville spot is already taken by Auburn just mm-hmm. barely, and that's and that's something that you know winning mm-hmm. that battle between the two gives yeah, you. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's a big deal. With, yeah. with Duke and Carolina with that Charlotte spot on the two line. Uh, Duke grabs that second Charlotte spot by finishing slightly ahead of North Carolina, second Carolina uh, after Nashville. Well, Duke's uh, Duke Duke's up east. Like if we could get them to Pittsburgh or somewhere, <laughs> yeah. that would get them Duke, close. Duke probably would be just fine with Pitt. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean let Carolina have Charlotte. We'll go to Pitt. You know, we're we're fine. Yeah. Yeah. A, a team that had fallen out of for a few weeks, out of our protected season, now back in as a three seed now is West Virginia, though. Uh, Stalika, let me ask you about this West Virginia team. They're, they're starting to trend up at the moment, aren't they? They're trending up at the same time that Texas Tech is uh, trending down. So it seemed like outside of Kansas, West Virginia has been much more consistent in the Big 12 at late. So it would stand to reason that someone from the Big 12 is going to be up in the three line. But I guess the other thing for West Virginia is if they can somehow win the Big 12 tournament, there's probably a decent chance they could land in Pittsburgh, depending on how the other pods lay out. Possibly. You know Villanova is going to stick his Pittsburgh spot, though, and so it's going to depend on how a few other things play out, where there's a second Pittsburgh spot left. Uh, Speaking of Tex Tech, uh, another Big 12 team here, and uh, Titel, Texas Tech – definitely treading in the wrong direction these days. Oh, you think so, Doctor? Um, it has <laughs> been a rough rough little month of February. I'm sure they can't wait for March to start. Granted, when you're losing to Baylor, Oklahoma State, Kansas, West Virginia, that's two protected seeds and two teams who are bubblicious. Um, a lot of them were – all four of them, it looks like, were 10 points or less, and three of them were on the road in the toughest conference in America. So I can explain it away, but it's certainly not the way you want to follow up a seven-game win streak with a four-game losing streak as you head into March. Yeah, and it's, they've been so beat up by injuries. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it has killed them. Let's take a look at the four line, the last of what we call the protected seeds here. Uh, Joby Clemson, again, mm. talking teams that are falling, uh, but Clemson getting it on, uh, still on the four well, line. Well, they, they stopped the fall. The, the win against Florida State's a big one. Uh, you know, that, you know, Florida State's, we'll see if they're in this tournament or not, you know, but because uh, they're not trending great, but that, that, Clemson's overall, once again, we're talking overall resume, and had they not won that Florida State game, I don't think you see them as a protected seed, but they did win that game, even if it's at home. It's a good win. It stopped, you know, it, it justifies the prior resume uh, um, that they've had, that they've built even after injuries have hit them. And I want to make a note here about some of the bracketing rules. This is our fourth ACC team. I already put a team in the other three regions. Therefore, that's why Clemson had to get that West region spot, uh, giving Xavier the advantage of not having to go up against the Gonzaga, who you mentioned earlier, Joby. It was just a bracketing rule thing. Well, uh, but- and it's just, I mean, when you look at who we're sending to Los Angeles, it is 
I, I mean, <laughs> Xavier, Clemson, Tennessee, and Purdue. <laughs> L.A. is going to be stoked. I mean, they're already lining up with the prospect of those four schools coming to town. Well, and, and, and regional balance is not exactly at its high point there. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. The last one, the last two, you know, at least the top four, you know, got in. But, you know. Well, by the same token, you have the bottom one and bottom two, but you still have a, a high three and a high four. So it does work itself out to some extent. Yeah, yeah, that that that's Xavier actually gets a big advantage. I think they've got the easiest region that we've just, just revealed already. But there's Gonzaga coming in at number fourteen overall. Uh, well, actually, Ty, Ty, let me ask you about them. You still don't have Gonzaga in the top sixteen, if I recall correctly. I love this team. So I think I had Gonzaga as a five. Um, and when you get to this part of the bracket, I think everything's fluid. Um, they certainly have a solid resume. I don't love the non-conference strength of schedule as much as they could. I'm sure they would love to be kept out in the Northwest in Boise. Um, the matchup, talk about great coaches here. You got Mark Few, Roy Williams, Bill mm -hmm. Self, and some guy at Auburn. I mean, that's a pretty <laughs> solid lineup. Yeah. He's just a great recruiter, John. Just a great. Yeah. Uh, I, I will actually mention that, that there was almost unanimity here about who the top 16s are, top 16 teams are, uh, other than – then, Titel, you did not have Gonzaga in your top 16. And Sleeka, you had a team that was out of your top 16 that was in everybody else's. Um, I don't know if they're coming in at 15 or 16. No, there they are, 15. Sleeka, you did not have Cincinnati as a protected seed. Do you want to explain that one? Honestly, I would probably favor Wichita, given that they probably have some better quality wins that Cincinnati really hasn't gotten in the American the quantity is still there, but they can uh, correct that with a, a win at the Roundhouse on Sunday. So I, I could argue this is a little more temporary as far as the, the Bearcats go, because losing to Cincinnati and Wichita, while not ideal, they did miss out on an opportunity to hang around, the, I think, the two or three line where they were slotted a couple weeks ago. It is kind of a weak case for a protected seed at the moment. Um, I, I, I'm a little surprised that, that anyone would have them ahead of Wichita. Uh, Wichita beat them. Wichita's won some other games. Cincinnati really – I mean, you know, I, they have the quadrant one wins, but aside from a home win, a home win at Houston, that's really their only team that appears to be making the field. The win at Central Florida is good, and those are other good wins, but are they protected seed caliber wins? This would be a weak case for a protected seed. It's not that we've never seen a team with a profile get one like this before, but it's sort of rare. Well, David, let me let me take the counter to that because you look at Cincinnati, all their losses are against teams that are going to be in this field. I think we could agree with that. Uh, Wichita, yeah. the only loss against a team that's going to be in this field is – well, they lost at Houston and maybe even the Oklahoma, maybe Oklahoma, <laughs> who knows the way they're playing right now. But they got the bad SMU loss now. Uh, they got the bad Notre Dame loss now. They got the bad Temple loss. They have bad on their profile that Cincinnati does not have. Well, uh, okay, okay. The bad Notre Dame loss. Uh, the, the committee's going to know that Notre Dame was a different team when they lost that game. Yeah, and, and, I, and I, we I, have to look at that. I mean, you can't just look at the number. You have to look, consider uh, well, the well, – well, well, wait a second. Then can't you count what they did tonight against Central Florida, almost losing to a Central Florida team that's missing like three of its best players? Uh, you know, they, yeah, they need – Yeah, and they lost. Yeah, but they needed overtime to beat them. But they if, won. If you want to say we're going to ignore the Notre Dame loss, why can't we ignore the Central Florida win? They did win. <laughs> And that, but the SMU lost. That was when SMU had Jeray Foster. They're profiling as a tournament team at that point. All right. Well, Matt, obviously Wichita State is number 16 overall. The one team that both uh, Sleeka and Titel had in their top 16 that would not here was Arizona. Um, and Titel, a little news out of Arizona today. Why don't we take a uh, – you want to give us a little update on what happened with the Wildcats, or do you not want to discuss <laughs> No, it's about time we've had some good news come out of Tucson after uh, the worst week ever. So um, I'll let you guys fill in the gaps. But the big headlines are uh, Coach Miller had his press conference and said that uh, he's not going away and he doesn't think he's done anything wrong. And he's called the reports about his wrongdoings defamatory. So I hope that his lawyers have a fun time fighting that. And then uh, star guard Alonzo Trier, um, after serving two games, well, I don't know about serving a suspension. I suppose being ruled ineligible would be more accurate. Um, apparently, 
I don't know if the substance is out of his system, but the ineligibility is out of his system back on the court as we speak against Stanford and uh, couldn't come at a better time because, uh, if, as, as we said, they're on the 4-5 uh, line here. And if you lose to Stanford or Cal, obviously you can forget about a protected seed. But if you can rally at home, the crowd's going to be with them. They should be favored in both games, assuming Aiden still plays. Um, couldn't come at a better time. Yeah, well, well, the substances are not quite out of my system. So, uh, David, I'm going to go ahead and reveal the, the entire five line. Obviously, Arizona is going to be on there. These are potential second round matchups you're going to start seeing here. There's Arizona in San Diego with a potential Ohio second round. Ohio State, match. Cincinnati. Yeah, that's a fun one. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Ohio State there. We also got Kentucky and Michigan coming in. Um, let me let me ask about this uh, Kentucky team, actually. David, you had them way lower this. You had them all the way down at 28. Titel, you had them highest of anybody up at 18, right, right, pretty much where we have them. Uh, but, uh, David, uh, what, why don't you, what don't you like about Kentucky? Well, I did like them. I thought I, I, I'm a little surprised to see them this high. I thought I was going to have them kind of on the high side. Uh, you know, pull their profile up. It's, it's good. I just didn't think that it was as good as some other teams. Um, part of it is, you, you know, just Texas A&M at home, I don't really give them a whole lot of credit for that. The, the win at West Virginia was spectacular. It's probably that is as good or better than anyone else on the five wide has. And the win at Arkansas was pretty tough. But it's just the, the, the abundance of losses. And then once you get past that, you're talking bubble or worse the rest of the way. And a lot of that was at home. And I just thought that, it isn't so much disliking them, I think, as it is when I put them next to everybody else. I just like the other what the other teams have done a little bit more. I guess. Uh, well, Titel, do you want to take the other end of this argument here? Why, why Arizona is a five seed? I'm sorry. Why Kentucky is a five seed? I mean, they've mostly lost. Uh, they've only lost the top 75 teams. Um, not a ton of tier ones, but three in the top 30, which I like, and solid across the board in tier two. I, I don't know how the committee's going to feel about. Tier two wins, is it going to be just something where it's a tiebreaker or is that enough to have you leapfrog over somebody who only has a couple of tier two wins if you stack the thing? Metrics are good. Non-conference strength of schedule. You want Kentucky or Wichita State? You want to go Kentucky here? I agree with Titel. Um, Michigan, uh, one more team on the line here, Matt. They, they survived today in the in their first uh, Big Ten game. Tried, tried to blow it to Iowa, but just found a way to win the game. <laughs> Yeah, given that I had them up at 18, that was probably good for them. That, the thing, I'm giving them the, basically some benefit that they're a good team that doesn't have a super profile, partly because of chances. Like, the part of the schedule they controlled, I think they did a decent job of. And got some okay wins, but the, the, the in-conference, that would have taken a hit. I would have probably had them down on the 7 or 8 line if they were the loss today. Delica, here's the six seeds. We got Virginia Tech against West Virginia, Rhode Island against Texas Tech, Florida against Auburn in a permissible all-SEC second-round game, and TCU matching up with Tennessee. Uh, your thoughts on those four teams? I see a nice little uh, under-the-radar-ish rivalry, at least as far as West Virginia and Virginia Tech go. I mean, granted, this year it's West Virginia and Virginia that actually played each other, but... Rhode Island, I mean, we thought Texas Tech was hurting. Rhode Island just got a, a spanking on national TV against uh, St. Joe's the other night. Yeah. What do you take out of that Rhode Island loss? Did you just throw that one away because it was just so, so ugly and so, just like so not Rhode Island that we've seen all season? It's really inexplicable. I mean, there's no doubt that Rhode Island is a better team. Um, I would have said they beat them 100 times out of 100. Obviously, we have to amend that to 99 out of 100. Um, I don't know how I feel about it being such a drastic loss. Like, it wasn't a one-point heartbreaker, like you said. Like, it's almost so outside the pale that you should throw it away because there's no other way to explain it. It'll certainly get the team focused as they head into 8-10 play in Washington, D.C. next week. And I will be there. (laughs) Joby, Vatek, you had them rated even higher than this, up onto the yeah. five line. They're just uh, on fire. I mean, they're, they're playing really well. This is – Go Buzz! Know, the Buzz. Yeah. And, and you know what? Despite the loss that is apparently going to occur tonight, they still own the best win, in my opinion, out there, which is walking into Charlottesville and winning. And 
they didn't luck box their way into it, even though it was a really tight game. It, they played well. They played well all along the way. And, you know, um, I can't believe Louisville just did that. And oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Um, anyway. I spoke too soon. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, we're, we're live on tape delay here. So. Live yeah. on tape yeah. delay. So. But, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, Virginia Tech's been playing great. The win this week just fur- further cements it. They're playing great. They have a load of good wins. And, uh, you know, anything bad on the resume is now starting to fade away. Uh, David, let me show you the seven seeds. Oh, just please do. Uh, just you. Uh, uh, Creighton just... matching up with Michigan State. Miami against Duke, another all-conference matchup there. Nevada against North Carolina. Seton Hall against Purdue. Uh, potential second round games. Yeah, uh, Creighton, big, big win against Villanova. And like I've been talking for years how much I like Creighton in the month of February coming through again. (laughs) (laughs) What the? (laughs) Trying to make a point. Matt, what about this Miami team? Uh, You know, moving up a little bit now. Well, yeah, that like, personally, that win over North Carolina really changed my opinion of them. So I'm like, they had been kind of floating around all year, eight, nine, ten lot, and I thought had they lost a couple of games this week, they might not even have made the field. Now, uh, I, I assume something crazy <laughs> is about to happen. <laughs> oh <laughs> my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, okay. I was on tape delay too, uh, David. Um, forget uh, that. Live on tape delay. <laughs> live on tape delay. Uh, Joby, you want to tell us what happened? I, I, I would like happened. to confirm that I would keeping Virginia on the overall number one line. Yeah, Louisville <laughs> had the ball at with oh. twenty-nine after Jerome. You know, oh, what are you? Oh, I was watching Miss, Miss, and, Missouri, and they, Missouri they State Valpo. What, what happened? Louisville had made a foot foul with point nine, giving the ball back to Virginia, and and uh, Hunter nailed a prayer three, and called bank. I assume, uh, <laughs> and uh, the bank was uh, he went to the bank. It was nice. He cashed in, and Virginia is got a very very impressive road win. I'm sorry, it was down ten with four minutes to go. That's the sort of win that it honestly serves you well in the tournament because then you think you can win any game even if you're yeah. down 10 with four minutes to go i'm just saying that's a that's a pretty impressive win for virginia yeah. and i gotta say that i just saw this happen one second ago because my computer is my stream that i have running the game is is way behind so it was insane um, i don't know i've seen it with like that all season uh, but i guess let's go back to things here well, i thought you all were watching game. valpo missouri state Last time I saw uh, something you. like that, uh, uh, D- uh, Thompson was doing it to Wake Forest, and we created a verb out of it. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt, we got on the eight line here: NC State, Florida State, a couple of SEC, a couple of ACC schools there, along with Arkansas with a potential Kansas game and A and M with a potential Xavier game. Uh, when you see those four teams, does anything shock you there? Man, I guess I'm the one who must be highest on Houston that we still haven't seen them yet, but. And I'm a little surprised Florida State, like, they were the ones I was high on most of the time. And now, I guess Joby's talked me down a little bit on them. I had them on my nine line. Mm-hmm. And, and it's my last the nine on Florida State, Matt, which kind of surprised me because of how much you've been talking about ball season, quite honestly. I think it's uh, just what scared – like, what scared me is the way they finished – like, the way they're playing now and looking at their words that non-conferences schedule suddenly starts playing a little more. And, general, like, that was what, like – I actually think if they're like a 5 6 team, they probably should have won that Clemson game, given what they are, not lost by 12. And, and we would certainly be dropping NC State right now, by the way. Uh, what did they do tonight? They lost to Georgia Tech in Atlanta. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I think they're still safely in the tournament, but boy, does a lot of shine come off because I've been the big NC State uh, promoter. This is like the first time That's I've heard that it's a single-digit team, around. and now – I had been doubtful on them all year. All of a sudden, I'm like, okay, I've got to finally make up my top nine seed, and boom. I think but both Butler and NC State are tanking just to try to avoid the 8-9 range. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll get to Butler later. Yeah, yeah, we have not seen Butler show up yet. Tina's heading the wrong direction also. But before I go on here, uh, uh, Dave, what about Arkansas, Texas A&M, the two SEC schools here? Um, 
I suddenly like Arkansas more, at least how they're playing now. I, A&M has maybe the better overall profile, but Arkansas has been the better team of late. If you were asking me which ones I, I think it's more dangerous, I would have to say Arkansas. I, I agree with that. Let's go ahead and show some potential first-round games, show the nine seeds here. Uh, and we've got – there's Butler, who we just mentioned, going against NC State in the all-closion <laughs> game. Uh, Oklahoma yes. Oklahoma against State. St. Mary's gets Arkansas. And Houston against Texas a and in an all-Texas interesting matchup. Oh, man, well, I will say, up, is Houston should be a two-seed okay. tie, or that matchup might be worth it. Yeah. Uh, well, then let me, let me go right, right here with you, Matt, on this Houston team, because I had Houston ranked lower than this, and I want – Somebody to explain to me what's so great about this Houston profile. They well, beat Cincinnati and Wichita State in Arkansas at home. They lost to Drexel. They lost to Tulane. They lost to Memphis. They lost to LSU. Uh, you know, they, they are – I'm just not seeing it there. They got the 252 non-conference strength of schedule. It's, it's, it's not a bad profile. It's a tournament profile, but I don't see this as a five- or six-line profile, which is where I'm seeing some people ranking them these days. Who's ranking them there? there? Uh, yeah, no, no. I mean, I, their <laughs> overall I, 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 is a 22. Game, like, but, but I said, let, let put it this 22nd, that a cumulative match here, and I like some wins. Yes. They have some wins to back it up. I mean, three teams we've already mentioned, and then a Providence team, I think we're going to mention on a neutral court. I mean, a little bit home court hero ish. That's probably why it's 7, 8, 9 instead of a 5. Little bit. Six, but. <laughs> we just said Central Florida was a good win, didn't we? <laughs> no, we, we <laughs> yeah. forgot Central Florida. that. <laughs> And as of now, even Tulsa is a tier two win for Houston. That's ridiculous, though. Yeah. Uh, uh, what about? Well, we do it every week. I think we got to do it again. Titel, what about Oklahoma? Um, <laughs> what do you do? You hope that they stop losing because they've been losing for most of February. Um, I think they can be. I know they can beat Iowa State. If they lose to them, I'm going to start putting hitting the panic button. Um, talk about a home court hero, 12-2 and two at home, 2-9 and nine on the road. Um, they really had some bad – they had a horrible month. There's no other way to say it. Luckily, they had a great December and January, as you can see all those Tier 1 wins in December and January, which will carry weight for the selection committee, I think, in the weeks ahead. Um, I still go back and forth on – I don't think the committee, like, would pick Oklahoma just to have Trey Young, but part of me thinks they would. <laughs> Well, I mean, they might want they might want them in the NIT to boost the ratings. <laughs> uh, Sleeker, you wanted to discuss Butler. I put them up there on the right hand side of the screen. Yeah, look at also look at their team sheet with uh, Georgetown now slipping to a tier four loss. So that is definitely not going to help Butler. But I guess the other thing is losing at St. John's without Shamori Pons and. This was a similar team that Butler just demolished a few weeks ago at Hinkle, but it seems like outside of Hinkle Fieldhouse, Butler is going to be very ordinary, 5-8 and eight overall away from home. So I've said this before, how many wins do they have in the Big East tournaments? Zero. Wow, they've never won a Big East tournament game. And I hope I didn't spoil uh, what could be a trivia question in one of the upcoming shows. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are – we need to start fact-checking those a little better. Uh, Joby, here's our 10 line. We've got Arizona State matching up with Creighton, USC matching up with Miami, Missouri matching up with Nevada, K-State matching up with Seton Hall there. Uh, David, I did get Missouri in the same region as Kansas, so just uh, on the opposite side. Well, I just side. think I – I just can't see Kansas as a one seed. I mean, I think uh, you got to flop them with North Carolina. Well, ironically, but, I would flop St. Mary's and Missouri. I think Missouri's – Well, that, that, we could do that. And I, that, I'm not kidding. I'm probably if you look at my seed list I submitted, well, actually, St. Mary's wouldn't have even been on, a, on the 10 line for me because well, I just don't – Missouri, like what have they lost four in a row? I, I, know, I know they won – they just beat Vanderbilt, but they've lost four real games in a row. And, I mean, they're just kind of going in the wrong direction. I don't even think I had them this high, to be honest. But, but they were like, I think before this recent streak, they were climbing up to a well, They were. They, they were and, before and they lost four in a row. And now, yeah, 10 is not an unrealistic. Like I said, I think I had them as a nine. Uh, and, yeah, but uh, I do see a team they could pass. Well, Especially um, if the team loses to someone besides St. Uh, Gonzaga. 
I put USC up here on the right-hand side. Matt, you had USC 35th overall. Uh, David, you had them, I think, as your last team in. Um, you, Matt, I'm more with you on this, that this USC team is trying to get the right direction, but do you want to make, start by making the argument in favor of them? And that last road trip really swayed it for me. Like, <laughs> the, oh, I think the only team in the Pac-12 to sweep the Utah-Colorado one, and Utah was playing for their tournament lives, essentially, and they go win that game there. And that the still the middle of New Mexico State wins still pretty solid wins. I mean, I think middle should have been in this field at this point, but mm -hmm. no, USC is the only team that was able to pull off the Mountain Double. Right, uh, David. What don't you like about USC? Well, I mean, you, you know, right now we have them seated in a place where no one in this field has they haven't beaten any of them, and. It's just when you haven't beaten anybody that's ahead of you, then you're probably where you need to be. Well, I'm surprised they actually have a very good road neutral, too, which I think that's one of your kind of go-tos. I mean, it's not – I guess maybe not super, but again, that Utah-Colorado, that's a unique – I know that. That's a road neutral record. That is really a nice one. Yeah. With not a ton of – I mean, yeah, you're going to play Cal and Oregon State because you play in the Pac-12. It's not their fault. But th those, are, those other ones, yeah, hey, you know. Vanderbilt's beating teams like Alabama at home. So, oh, wait a minute. We haven't mentioned them yet. Oh, we'll get there in a, in a little bit. But Lots of people have beaten Alabama at home. <laughs> Titel, you're our Pac-12 guy. Uh, USC now on the same seed line as Arizona State. Did you see that one coming? No, but I also didn't see ASU losing all their conference games. I mean, they were undefeated a couple months ago, and now they're like a bottom-tier Pac-12 team. USC has had all this drama off court, but on the court, they've been winning and winning. I still, the game this weekend against UCLA is going to be fascinating just because UCLA needs it more, and it's an in-state rivalry. It's an in-city rivalry, so it's going to be yeah. a fantastic game. <laughs> that, that's one of those, I don't think, even if the NCAA tournament wasn't a fact there, there's enough juice of that one. That <laughs> Here's what I don't like about Arizona State right now. They're one game under 500 in both quad one and quad two and also have the quad three loss at Oregon State. So that is very definitely bubblish, categorically speaking. Let's go ahead and show three of the eleven seeds here. Not, not quite all four of them yet, but we do have Providence, Middle Tennessee inside the bubble here, and Baylor uh, all on this 11 line. Uh, David, you had a comment. I d okay, yeah, I was changing the station. Uh, I really okay. like this Middle Tennessee team. Uh, it looks like they're inside the bubble, but um, I would I, the way they played the night. Yeah, I, I I would think that they're at least looking the part. Uh, they also have won a lot of road games, and I know it's not quite the same, but it's not easy to win at Western Kentucky. They did it. It's not easy to win at Old Dominion. They did it. They've won a lot of road games against teams that have really. good good home records, even if they're not tournament teams. Uh, I think that they are potentially dangerous. And at this point, if they can finish off their last game and then avoid uh, – if they can get to the semis, I, I think the committee should take them regardless of what they do after that. And they might already. They're in the rankings. So, uh, Can I bring up – Matt, you're a Big East guy. Let me bring you in on this question. Providence, I have them on the left here. How are we putting a team with three – Tier four losses in this field. Can you explain that to me. I was the Minnesota one. That was a different Minnesota team. They had they had uh, Reggie Lynch still, and that they were they were way underhanded on the UMass game. No, the only one. wins they've had are, are at home. Yes, they have two very nice ones, Villanova and Xavier. But but that's it, isn't it? And, and you got twelve losses already. I mean, point out, you've beaten – they've beaten most every other big – like, Big East, either tournament team or team in the discussion. It's that well, like, I, said, I, I, I think I think the 11 lines about where they should be, but I think this is fair. They have wins. Plus, they have wins over two number, number one, one seeds. Seed. Yeah, it's – Two number one seeds, and unlike St. John's, they've actually beaten other teams. Yeah. <laughs> but, of course, we would certainly suggest they not lose at home to St. John's on uh, senior day. So, yeah, yeah. That would not be a good idea. That would not be a good That one. probably knocks him out, certainly. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, first two of our first four. They're on the 11 line there in the West region. Uh, Titel, it's Louisville and Alabama. Um, 
I think we could discuss both of these at a little bit of length. But let's start with Louisville. Uh, even with that loss tonight, do, do you still think that they're a tournament team at this point? I mean, you can't really hold that too much against them, can you? I think they should go up in the rankings. They had <laughs> Virginia beat and then blew it. Um, they've beaten up on teams like Pitt and Georgia Tech in February. The win at Virginia Tech was amazing. No shame losing to Carolina and Duke back-to-back. Um, or Virginia. I mean, they're losing to top one, two, three seeds. The game at NC State this weekend, as we said, a reeling NC State team, it's not a play-in game, but uh, if Louisville loses to that Wolfpack team and loses in the first round of the ACC, they're going to be sweating out Selection Sunday. Uh, and, and the way the conference tournament is shaking out, there, there is a good chance that that 8-9 game will involve, uh, will involve Florida State and Louisville. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, that, that very well could be uh, the 8 9. Joby, I got to bring this up here. The team on the right there, Alabama, who would be their first four opponent in this bracket, I'll tell you quite honestly, they were not in my top 50 at all here. I mean, I just cannot get over that looking is. at seven losses tier two and lower. Uh, I can't get past that. How do you do that? I, I well, I had them. I had them losses, exactly sorry, where we have. This is exactly where I had them. I had them. You know my theory. This is. I'm not saying the committee does this. That's why we're picking as we see it, not as we think the committee will see it. I have always felt playing games are for schizo teams and teams we don't know enough about. You, you know, and so Alabama's a little schizo because they also have good wins against Rhodey, Tennessee, Auburn at Florida, which is five or six, uh, depending more to you, uh, what, how you look at them. This, they've piled up a nice little resume if you look at the left side of the column. The right side of the column, you know, is a tier two loss that bad when you're talking Florida at home or Texas on a neutral? Oh, wait a minute. Let's wait uh, five seconds for that discussion. (laughs) I don't know if it's schizo as much as it is they're good at home and bad on the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, but and, and David, exactly. All those good wins, only one of them is on is away from home. The Florida win. Yeah, and that's half of their road wins. Exactly. Uh, I, I have big problem here. And if they lose this game this weekend at A and M, I really can't see making the case for them. At, at well, anymore. the overall record starts to come into play at yeah. some point. They're yes. on the edge of it. Yeah, you know, they're on the edge of it. If you're four games above five hundred and you have a collection of tournament quality wins, you still have a reasonable shot at the field depending on what other people do. Once you start shrinking, and Matt mentioned this on Monday night, one if they were to lose to AM and then lose in the SEC and they are only clear by two, there is no way they are in this field because they're not Georgia from 2001 or whatever. Oh, yeah, that idea. Uh, Salika, let me show you our last two first four teams. They're also on, they're on the 12 line there. I believe they're coming up in the East region, uh, the Bonnies and Texas. Uh, yeah, if you stay, if you stay better than our the last two, but go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, if you stayed up late for Tuesday night between uh, St. Bonaventure and Davidson, that was one of the classic matchups as far as uh, I think four or five guys getting, 30 points apiece between both uh, the Bonnies and the Wildcats in that one. And but fouling think, out in the process. Yeah. Um, I also, what's amazing is how Bonnies survived those performances from Aldridge and Grady. That was – I mean, I know they had, like, Adams, Mobley, Stockard all had great games on their own, right? But, I mean, you had Aldridge and Grady just go off on you like that. That's amazing they survived that. But I think to it's, get back to no, what Chad's – No, there's nothing amazing about – a double overtime win against an NIT team at home. Thank you. That, I mean, that is not even impressive. If you didn't like them before that game, how can you like them after that game? Well, is, I think, okay, David said 60-ish in the rankings, but they play like – 60-ish, yes, NIT. The 60-ish team played like their A-plus game, which they played like a top 15 team that night, and you still won the game. They well, beat, I, I would just like to thank North, uh, North Carolina and Miami – because that game went long a little bit and was so thrilling, it gave me the, oh, 
Bonnie's and Davidson have gone to overtime. I think I'm going to switch over. And I got treated to one, which really was one of the great games, regardless of, you know, where teams are ranked or not. Yeah. If you just I'm not, like basketball, it was a lot of fun. I'm not saying it wasn't a great game. And like Chad and Stalika and I, we look at these under the radar teams, and there are teams we liked in November and December. My thing is, if you didn't like St. Bonaventure in January, how does beating up on predominantly sub-NIT teams, which is what this conference is, suddenly make you like them? They haven't really done anything at any point other than a home win over Rhodey. That's really that great. The win at Syracuse was good. But, it, you know, they lost at Davidson. and they lost at Dayton. These, the, Dayton's nowhere near the United. Neither is Joe's. Neither is Niagara. And I just don't see how, oh, man, they beat Davidson, a 60-ish team in double overtime at home. What a big win. I don't – if you didn't like this team a month ago, why do you like them now? I, I, that's my thing. I think that people see that they're winning games, and they are winning games, and it was the old Memphis phenomenon when they were in Conference USA. I mean, they weren't that good. They they proved that they could beat sub-NIT teams, and that's really all the Bonnies have done. Well, here's what I'm, I'm, going against, this is, I'm going against the metrics, which I don't do that often, but I like the Bonnies team with my own eyes enough that – I'll skip the metrics a little bit. I think they're a really good team. And I think the metrics are flawed a little bit because of what Jalen Adams missed time. That Niagara game, of course, so he plays that Niagara game. They win that by 20, probably not losing it at home. And, and with uh, that, if you say. take that loss off their profile, I don't think there's much discussion of whether they're in or not. Uh, in I mean, there is the matter of the, you, you know, three other losses against really bad teams. Let me let me ask about this other team up here, Texas on the right. And Titel, um, seven and ten in conference. West Virginia at home this weekend. Uh, you can't go seven eleven and make the field, can you? Probably not. They do have the excuses of Mobamba getting hurt. Eric Davis has been hurt. Andrew Jones has leukemia, I believe. I mean, they've got problems on the roster. Granted, like problems aside, if you lose all your games, then you're not going anywhere. But they have some excuses, and they have obviously a Big Twelve tourney coming up. They don't have to win it all. If you get a couple of big wins against big teams, I think you're in the discussion, but certainly walking the tightrope. Uh, David, I'm going to reveal the top team out. I'm just going to reveal one team for now. It's just going to be, this is our top team out, believe it or not. Uh, look in the Midwest region. Uh, this, actually, this team is in, but it was the top vote getter of, of everybody else. Uh, Loyola Chicago got more votes than anybody else that missed out on the field. Uh, your thoughts yeah. on this Loyola team and whether they I like they them more can, than the Bonnies. Uh, can they – I don't know that they can survive a loss in the MVC tournament, but can they, can they get above the first four here if they win the MVC? I think – well, I, I don't – I'm inclined to say no. Uh, I think that they should be, but I'm inclined to think that, that the committee won't put them there. But in my opinion, like what they've done in that league is in a league that's about as good as the A-10 just without Rhodey is is as impressive as what St. Bonaventure's done. And they have a win that's better than one the Bonnies have. I like them more than St. Bonaventure. And with my own eyes, too, I think they look better than St. Bonaventure. And you've got to remember that that Custer, one of their best players, was out for both the Missouri State and the Milwaukee losses. Um, and I believe for half of that Boise State game maybe he might have played that one boise blasted him but i I mean they have won games you know illinois state southern illinois those are those are two teams with really good home records and when you look at you know evansville northern i was kind of a crap it to me it's just not that different i'm going to steal i'm going to steal john titel's thunder here uh a little bit in saying that non-conference schedule being low hurts them and I just did a very quick thing on the computer. The JNG has them about five or six spots out. That's probably where the committee would have them, to be very honest. Yeah. You take away that bad non-conference schedule, they are ahead of Texas for the last spot in. And it's a big deal. If you are playing in a conference like that, you've got to do your best to try to do better than 259. Yeah, like I was, I had the above the first four, but that's like under the criteria of they're the auto bid winner. Like if they win the Valley tournament, I want them as an 11 seed personally. I'll be vouching for them that if they don't do it, they're probably out of the field. 
So that's kind of like I had them at 44, but that's like I said, treating them as a Valley Auto, like that they're winning the Valley Auto bid. All right. Well, let, let's go ahead and take a look at the top four teams that did not make this field. These will be our one seeds in the NIT, by the way. I talking to NIT earlier. Uh, and Matt, your Marquette team, number one out, followed by Syracuse, UCLA, and Oklahoma State. Syracuse. Um, I'm the uh, AC guy, and I got to scratch my head at that one. It's a, well, well I had, you and I, Joby, neither of us had Syracuse in our top 50. Ty, tell you had them in there, didn't you? While holding my nose with both of my hands, because I know it stinks. It's just, I think that when we're getting, I don't, I don't know that Texas is head and shoulders about Syracuse, I guess I would say. Right. I mean, David, I kind of would like UCLA better of best of these four in this list, or maybe Oklahoma State, uh, not Marquette. Or uh, not Oklahoma so, State. I like UCLA. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Go West, young man, if you want to find bubble teams just missing. Right. Yeah. Well, Pac-12 uh, is chock full of teams that probably will not be in this tournament, but will be in the first four, first eight out. <laughs> there, there's Oklahoma. the there's, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Stalika, one second. There, there's the other four. Next four out are Washington, Mississippi State, Utah, and Nebraska. So uh, two more Pac-12 teams in there. But go ahead, Stalika. I was going to say, if Oklahoma State makes this field at its current rates, their RPI would be a whopping 95, which yeah, is uh, pretty close to a triple-digit territory. In a conference where you don't have an excuse for a high RPI. Let me just point that out. Uh, let, let's go ahead and quickly go reveal the rest of the field. The rest of the other 12 seeds playing Michigan will be a very dangerous South Dakota State team. And playing Ohio State will be a very dangerous New Mexico State team. I like this South Dakota State team a lot. I, I hope that they – that's going to be a fun tournament next week. Some first-round games, matchups with the four seeds here. We'll reveal the 13s there. Cincinnati gets Louisiana. Wichita That's gets Murray. Gonzaga Ooh. gets Vermont. Yeah. Buffalo. Uh, some possible upsets there. Maybe not the Clemson. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, 14 seeds. We're giving West Virginia the College of Charleston. We're giving Texas Tech, Northern Kentucky. Auburn gets Greensboro. Tennessee gets Montana. Not really seeing in much in terms of upsets there. No, Tennessee Montana would be a fun game, but not an upset. I don't know. The 15 line. You know, see Greensboro's got some. I've seen them play a number of times. I like them. They beat NC State. They were, for a long time, the only team to cover against Virginia. They only lost by like nine or 10 points uh, against Virginia in Charlottesville. It, watch out for UNC Greensboro. Especially, yeah, especially if you get like a, a, a Auburn team that's lipping into the field quite yeah, literally. I, 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 I would. I would, in a seed differential bracket, I would pick UNC Greensboro in every pool. The 15 line is up there. Uh, Bucknell against Michigan State, a very dangerous Bucknell team. Uh, UC Davis against North Carolina, Ryder against Purdue, and Titel, your Penn Quakers uh, get Duke. For the second straight week, you're killing me, man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want you to drop me to 16. Believe me, we can't beat Villanova. I saw that massacre earlier, but... <laughs> send me, put me on my misery and send me to Detroit and let the Lika Xavier team beat up on me or something. Uh, Xavier gets UNC Asheville, actually. Nova gets Gulf Coast. Uh, Virginia gets whatever Wagner Texas Southern game. Uh, K State gets whatever Nichols State Hampton game. But that's the field. Um, let me run through each of you for any thoughts about what we did here and, and the brackets or, or, or the teams that we left out or, or the like. And uh, Salika, let me start it off with you. I'm actually going to go in a slightly different direction, given some of the things that were brought up in chat. If Niagara can pick up a one win in the Metro Atlantic, every team in the big four in Western New York will have at least 20 wins in the regular season. I do not believe that has ever happened before. Certainly not since uh, Buffalo transitioned up to D1. That's a good stat for you. I like that one. Uh, Joby. Um, we've mentioned this a few times, and this bracket reveals it. Uh, the 11 seed is where one of the playing games sits. That's under a best-case scenario, pretty much, uh, in a lot of cases, of no upsets happening. Yeah, you know, that sort of thing, because we're dealing with middle on the 11 line and that sort of thing. The, we just don't have the mid-major at large this year that normally has, because usually the playing game, you can almost slate in as being a 12 seed uh, affair. That will have an impact. Uh, that will have an impact going forward, I think, on the upsets that we see on the 512 line. 
uh, in, in a lot of ways uh, because you're not going to, you know, you're going to have the best of the conference champs come out of the, uh, of the mid tier and the, and the lower level conferences, but you're not going to have, because believe it or not, most of the time those five twelve upsets happen from a play in game winner, then going on, they're already rested. They're already in the rhythm and they're catching a rusty five seed. Uh, pay attention to that as we go forward. A point. Uh, Matt. I guess the one thing is I'm probably most guilty of this all is this time of year declaring a win is fatal or a win a, a win puts you in a loss is fatal. Like trust me, last Saturday when Marquette lost to DePaul, I'm like, oh geez, this is over that and now we see Marquette first team out has created at home and then potentially if I, my predictions come to you would play Providence in the first round of the Big East tournament. You win those two games, Marquette's probably in this field. So it's crazy to say, like, oh, it's a week ago or not even a week ago, I was uh, – myself and all our Marquette alums writing Marquette for dead. So, like, the one is the other team we mentioned, and I hate doing this because I really want to pile dirt on them, might be a little premature doing it on Syracuse. If they beat Clemson and then win a couple of games of the ACC tournament, <laughs> as painful as it is, I don't want this to happen. But, like, it's one of those I got – be careful of either declaring you're in the field or you're out at this point even still. Until you lose, basically lose in the conference tournament. Did Did you miss the fact that Syracuse lost at Boston College last night? I mean, was I the only one that saw that game? Oh, no, <laughs> why were you I watching won, that I game? I was out. Them. I really do. Before yeah. that game, they were out before that game. <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, uh, Titel. <laughs> so I had assumed that the center of the college basketball universe on Saturday was going to be Durham, North Carolina. I regret to inform everyone that it will be Columbia, Missouri, because there are reports conflicting reports about Michael Porter Jr.'s health and or status of playing. There are some reports that saying if he feels good, he could play against Arkansas. Other reports are that if he's healthy, he will play. Um, I've seen this, excuse me, against Arkansas, not, not Alabama. Um, he's only played two minutes all year before getting injured in the season opener. Um, I think that right now, if he plays, right now we have them as a 10 seed in Nashville. Um, I think they'll only go up from there. I think he could really impact how they do in the SEC tourney. And if I'm a coach who loves to scout, I don't know how to scout him because he's only played two minutes all season. I think they could be a dangerous team. Not Final Four dangerous, but I think that regardless of their seed, they would be a strong contender for the Sweet 16. He's that good. I just said, uh, David, before I get to your final thought, I just want to commend the Big Ten for not only bringing their ugly pinwheel to the Madison Square Garden, but they also brought the floor cam. So thank you, Big Ten, for two of my yeah. favorite things this time of year. Uh, but, David, your thoughts to ride us up. Uh, really, and just, and this has all started, it started on Monday. We've been following it all week. But when you look at the 12 and 13 lines of this bracket, I really, really hope the chalk holds because there are some really good teams. While Joby made the observation, and he's right, that we didn't get um, one or two teams that we're used to seeing inside the bubble from the under-the-radar conferences. Holistically, I guess there's more good – even though there aren't – as many really good teams. I think there's more good teams than what we're used to seeing. Louisiana is good. Uh, everybody on the 12 and 13 line is good. And you just kind of want to see the chalk hold. And so those teams can make to the tournament because I, I, those are really, those would be really fun games to watch, the ones that we have there. I, I agree with you. I think this will be a fun tournament. It's uh, probably not going to be this for the final bracket. I just have a feeling it's going to not quite be this. So maybe one or two changes, but uh uh, but uh, on that note, I do want to uh, go ahead and pull that down here and do want to just thank everybody for joining us. Uh, on behalf of Matt Zakowski, John Titel, Joby Fordson, David Griggs, John Salika, anyone else that might be around, uh, you can look down below us now, look at the final bracket if you want to explore it a little bit more. Uh, but I'm Chad Sherwood. Thanks for joining us. And we'll be back again. Actually, we're going to be recording another podcast later tonight, a video notebook, and we'll have more video notebooks every night. I think we'll have another bracket rundown show beginning of next week as well. So uh, take care, everybody. Have a great night.